The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is if you have a fire in your oven or in your microwave. So before we get to that part, what are the three things that fire needs to burn? Oxygen, fuel, heat. So it needs fuel, heat, and oxygen. Good job, I didn't have to prompt you guys. All right, so a fire needs fuel, heat, and oxygen to burn. It needs, you need those, those three things in high enough quantity to have a fire and to sustain a fire. And if we remove one of those things, you're gonna put the fire out. So if I light a candle in this jar and then cover it with a lid, how long do you guys think it's gonna take for the fire to go out? One second? Seven? Two, three? Anyone think higher than 10? Five seconds? 15 seconds, okay. Tell me when you are ready. So I'm gonna light this candle and then I'm going to cover it with the lid so we can see how long it takes for the fire to go out. All right, go. All right. So it's, we're past most of your guesses. Where are we at? 10. Okay. 15. Okay. So now, 19. so 19 seconds, okay? Why did it take longer than most of your guesses to put the fire out? Right, so there's a certain amount of air in this container. If I had a bigger candle that took up more space, it would take less time for the fire to go out, right? If I had a smaller candle that took up less space and there was more air in the jar, then it would take a lot longer for it to go out, right? So <clears throat> we need fuel, heat, and oxygen basically for a fire to start and to sustain a fire. So if we have a fire in our stove or in our microwave, the best thing to do is leave the door closed and either turn off the power to the microwave um, or hit stop on the microwave or turn off the power to the oven and leave the door closed because it will burn itself out. And remember that those that our oven and our microwave are built to withstand high temperatures. Um, and especially ovens because they have a self-clean feature that is essentially a super high temperature for a long period of time that just burns everything into dust that you then can clean out of the bottom of your oven. Um, so if you leave the door closed, it should go out. If it doesn't go out after a certain period of time and you're getting very uncomfortable with it, you can call 911 at that point, okay? Um, it is also important not to turn, to leave like the oven on if you're gonna leave the house. And I know that most ovens have two timer settings. One timer is just a timer, it's just audible, just beeps to tell you that your food should be done cooking. The other timer turns off the oven. Um, a couple things could happen. If that timer fails and does not turn off the oven and you're not in the house, it will continue to cook your food to the point that it could catch fire. If you're not there to turn off the power to stop feeding the heat to the, um, to the fire, then it, could, it will continue to burn, okay? Um, we have had that happen once. We had a family who put something in the oven and they went out shopping and it was right before the holidays. They thought they turned on the timer that would shut off the oven and maybe she did, maybe it malfunctioned. Um, left the house, was gone a lot longer than she even expected and when she came back, someone had called 911 because they heard the smoke alarms going off in her kitchen and so the firefighters were there fighting a giant fire, her kitchen was destroyed. So um, yeah, so it's not, it's not okay to do that. You can set that timer if you're gonna be in the house, I would say that's probably fine. Um, but if you're gonna be gone for a period of time and actually drive away from your home, I would not set that timer. Um, and I realize the stoves and things are getting smarter, but let's just go with that for now. So. There's a fire in your microwave or oven, turn the power off and leave the door closed, okay? So that we don't introduce oxygen into those, into the oven or the microwave. Cool? All right, so now if there's a fire on your stove, that's a bit of a different story. So I have some things up here that might put out a fire on the stove top. So let's talk about them. Let's actually start with the baking soda. So would baking soda work? It would. And I know that if you take a secondary level of culinary, is it the second one for you as well? This, this guy okay, yeah. so, so 
you may read in one of your books that you should use baking soda. And baking soda will put out a fire on a stovetop. It's actually, it's, it would work well. Um, the problem is that if your baking soda isn't right next to the stove, when you go to cook, it's gonna be hard to get to, right? So like at my house, it's in my pantry somewhere, I'd have to turn around and go dig for it. So that's not a good option if we've got a fire burning on our stove. I know that she keeps her pantry locked sometimes. So are you gonna stand there while the fire just continues to get bigger waiting for her to unlock the pantry? So if this is accessible, yes, it would put out a fire on your stove. So I'm gonna put it in the middle because it would work, but, not, but only if it's right next to, to us when the fire breaks out, right? What about salt? No, most, I'm seeing most heads shake no. So if I were to pour this whole thing onto my fire, yes, there would be enough of it to smother out my fire. The problem is, is this how I usually keep salt next to my stove top? How do we usually keep salt next to our stove top? In a salt shaker that's about this big, right? So even if I unscrew the lid and pour it on my pan, I'm not gonna put out the fire with that much salt, right? So this is not a good option. What about flour? Yes. yes, if I were to get the whole contents of this bag onto the pan. However, what is flour made from? Wheat. Wheat. And what do they do to the wheat after they cut it in the field? They have to let it do something before they grind it up and put it in the bag. Dry out. Dry out. And so it's essentially a dried grass, kind of, right? Is dried grass flammable? Very, Very flammable. So do you think this is flammable? Yeah. Yes. And especially if I'm in a panic mode because I've got a fire on my stovetop, am I gonna stand there and like gently pour this on my fire until the fire goes out, until I've smothered it out? Or do you think I'm gonna stand at a distance? You just it did exactly what I would do probably. <laughs> Toss it onto the to fire. So if I'm standing back here and I'm tossing this onto the fire, now I've just added more oxygen in between each of the particles and I've made it even more flammable. So it actually would be hard for me to light this bag of fire on flour because the particles are so close together. Once it becomes airborne, we're adding oxygen in between those particles, which makes it even easier for it to light on fire. Does that make sense? So this would not be a good thing to put on a fire. What about a wet towel? If I got this wet enough and I put it on top of my pan, it would work. The problem is how long is it gonna take me to turn around or step to the side and wet this towel? Yeah, I think it would take about 20, I've never timed it, but I could. I think it would take about 20 seconds for me to fully wet this towel. Because I don't want any dry spots on it before I'm tossing it on a fire, right? So if, I'm gonna take about 20 seconds. Meanwhile, I've got this fire burning. And then I'm, to really have it be effective, I would have to lay my towel gently down on top of my fire. Does anybody in this room feel comfortable with doing that? Yeah. Being that close to the fire? Yeah. No. Of course no. That's not, nope. <laughs> That's not what we're going to do because, and I think most people would not, so even if that would work, most people are not gonna take the time or get themselves close enough to do that. They're going to toss this. That did not work. About half my pan is covered and the other half is not, okay? So no, no wet towel. I don't want you, because the biggest reason is that we're taking an extra 20 seconds to wet our towel. Even if you feel comfortable laying it gently over the top of the fire, we're taking an extra 20 seconds that we know, don't need to take to wet that towel. So that is not a good option. What about my fire extinguisher? Yeah. Yep, and this is actually a kitchen fire extinguisher. So it's made for that type of fire. Um, I would say though, if you're gonna use this fire extinguisher or any fire extinguisher, don't aim the nozzle straight down. So if my fire were in this pan, I don't wanna aim it straight down into the pan like that. Why wouldn't I do that? Yeah, because it doesn't come out with so much force that it would knock you back, but it comes out with some force. And so if I point it straight down into the pan that's on fire, it will force the contents out of the pan and potentially onto me. And I don't wanna do that. So if I'm gonna use it, I wanna aim this nozzle low at the base of the fire. So I would aim it something like this, okay? Not like this. I don't wanna aim it too high or straight across. I wanna aim it at a slight angle toward the base of the fire. Um, so when you go to use a fire extinguisher and you have one in the classroom, you wanna remember the acronym PASS. So P-A-S-S, -S, P stands for pull, so you would pull the pin. 
and on your extinguisher here in the classroom, there is uh, a little red tab on the pin. So my pin is red. That pin is actually a little silver ring. And then the tab goes through it to keep it in there. So you would pull, you could either pull the pin and break that tab, or you could break the tab first and then pull your pin out. Either way works. So you would pull that pin, aim the nozzle low at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and then sweep side to side across the whole width of the fire. That extinguisher actually has a hose at the end of the nozzle. And so all you would have to do is use the hose. So this one I would have to move the whole extinguisher, right? That one I would just have to use the hose to sweep side to side. This would work. This would work very well. The only problem is it's going to make a giant mess. And if we were to spray an extinguisher in this room, there would be little particles of extinguisher dust everywhere forever. She'd be wiping it off of things for the rest of her career. Nope. But it would still work, and it's still a good option. And I still recommend it. If, you don't, if it's your last resort and you need to get a fire out, definitely use an extinguisher. OK, what about water? No. no. Why? You, not on a grease fire. That's right. What? It's grease. Do water and oil mix well together? No. no. They never mix well. If I were to add oil to this bottle, they would separate. And even if I shook it up, I'm still going to have, at some point, they're still going to separate again. They don't want to mix. They will not mix. Okay. So if I have hot oil in this pan and I have a fire, now I've heated it to the point that it's on fire. If I pour the water on it, it's going to explode back out of the pan and it's going to come back out at you and it'll get higher than those cabinets um, would probably catch the towels in between the cutting boards on fire as it goes so it would be yes it would be a big problem and you definitely don't want to be standing in front of a pan that's on fire and pour water on it because it will get all over you too it brings the fire up and out of the pan all right so the best thing for you to do is to use a lid even better than the fire extinguisher is a lid, okay? So if I have a fire, let me make sure I can, yep. So if I have a fire in my pan, I'm gonna use the lid like a shield and I'm going to slide it gently over the top of the pan. So what I did there was if I had a fire in here and I'm on this side of the pan, okay? So if I'm back here, I just slide the lid right over the top of the pan. I didn't do this. Why? Yep, because I'm forcing the air into it and then forcing the contents up and out. So that won't do me any good. So shield, slide, and then our fire goes out. So remember that I said that this does not have to be a 911 call. As long as we stay calm and we take a lid or anything flat, it can be a lid, it could be a cookie sheet like this. If my pan was small enough, I could use this. Just slide that over the top. Um, those cutting boards, you could use those and slide those right over the top. Something flat that's going to do, what is it going to do when you put it over the top? Take the oxygen away, right? So it's smothering the fire out. All right. Does anybody want to come try this? Of course you do. Also, before we get started, if you're going to come up here and you have strings, headphone strings, a hoodie string, tuck it into your shirt so that it doesn't catch fire. Um, anyone with long hair, if you're going to cook, whether it's in this classroom or at home, pull your hair back before you lean over into the stove or over the top of the oven. It's just safer for you. If you wear clothing that has long sleeves or sleeves that hang down, make sure you roll those up or take off the shirt before you cook. All right. So go ahead and put the oven mitt on. Want me to take this one? Yeah. All right. Don't slam it down on top, though. Yep. Perfect. Oh, Good job. Dear. All right. So if we move the pan, especially before we're calm and have it covered, we are likely to take everything that's in there on fire and not only spread it all over ourselves potentially, but all over our home and start a fire in our home. If the fire is contained to our pan and we cover it with a lid, that's it. That's the only damage we have. We may have a damaged lid. We may have a damaged pan, but that's the extent of the damage. If we pour water on it, we are going to be, we, you will get burned if you do that, and you will make the fire bigger and catch something on your house in fire, on fire. 
Um, we had a gal one time who was heating oil in her kitchen and she took her, she picked up the pan that was on fire and she took it outside and set it on her barbecue grill. And then the wind picked it up and spread it on the side of the house. And so they had, they ended up having a huge fire on the side of their house and lost a portion of their house to that fire. Where if she had just covered it with a lid, she could have avoided that whole entire thing. Okay, so even, so we wanna make sure, we wanna make sure that we stay with our food when it's cooking. I understand that if you put something in the oven or the microwave, you don't feel, I don't want you to have to sit there and like stare at the, at the oven, but if you wanna walk away for a minute, set a timer that you'll hear. So if you have a smartwatch, set it on your smartwatch, take your cell phone with you, because the, the oven or stovetop timers are very easy to tone out and not hear. So take something with you too, take a, an oven mitt, take a wooden spoon so that you remember that you have something cooking, okay? Um, if you're in the kitchen, it's also easy to get distracted. Let's say you're heating oil so that you can fry something up and then you step aside to cut whatever it is that you wanna, or prep your meat or cut some vegetables. It takes about two to three minutes depending on how high the burner is and how much oil you have in the pan. That's all it takes is two to three minutes most of the time to have the pan start on fire. 